So this is where we left off CMYK separation as a potential potential way to uh, get an overall finish to your digital artwork, right? And you can see it just gives a little bit of that that texture, that uh, that hand done artifact of physical printing to the work. Okay. So let's play with it. The great thing about digital is I've played with diffusion textures. I've played with uh, texture overlays. I've played with different blending modes on layers, all to get these different effects. But notice that this has kind of a different feel than this, which has a different feel than the solid black line. What's nice about a finishing technique is it can unify everything before finished printing, right? So I can take this whole poster just to experiment with this. And what I'm going to do is make a copy of it on top of everything. So I'm going to go to my, my last uh, visible layer. I'm going to hold down option and then say layer merge visible. So it's all on one layer. And then I'm going to show you the cheat way, the, the way that Photoshop gives you, um, which I think is kind of a, a not great way. And that's with its filters. So now that I have everything on one layer, I can go up to filter and I can try a finishing technique this way. And filters, the one we, we use that I like to use is Gaussian blur, right? Every once in a while, I'll play with sharpen when I need to, though the computer is much better at blurring out sharp edges than it is sharpening soft edges. But for this, we're going to go to the filter gallery. Now, the filter gallery, I'll scroll to something. You have all these different folders, and we can start with artistic. Right? All of these are different kind of overall finishes so I could add film grain to something. And it should preview it, but that one's not very extreme. I could do a pellet knife, which looks terrible. I think pellet knife has kind of always looked terrible. I can do it as a sponge painting. Right? So a lot of these things are really cheesy. They've been in Photoshop for a while. You can use them in creative ways as long as you're in control of them and don't just use them flat out, right? Because it's basically a programmer deciding how to mess up your artwork <laughs> as like a shortcut. So watercolor does not make it look like a watercolor, right? I wouldn't say. Now, if you go down to the sketch ones, so Satorian was talking about the, the Street Fighter, I think it's Street Fighter 3 that had the Stanley Lau kind of black and white charcoal digital paintings. This is charcoal, right? And yeah, a little bit, it adds that texture to everything, even to the black lines. It could be useful. And you could always layer this on top of what you have. That's why I made it as a duplicate layer, right? But this is where they have halftone. Under sketch, they have one called halftone pattern. Notice that it's not full color, because halftone can only be done in one overall tone. You have to separate the colors before you can have it in multiple colors. And you can play with the size of the dots and you can play with how contrasted they are, basically how dark they are. And you can play with whether they're dots at all, or if it's, this gets pretty trippy, if it's done as a circle, so that it kind of radiates out. And that can be kind of fun to play with. That's an old uh, engraving technique. Or if it's done in a linear fashion, right, which is less interesting, it's like a dot matrix printer. But let's play with this, not the circle, sorry, let's play with the dot pattern, since that's what I was showing in the slides. And let's make it pretty visible, but not so contrasted. So I don't want it so, so dark. All right, then I say okay, and I get a much less interesting image. But what I can do is then blend that in to 
my artwork. I can use it to lighten the image using a, a lighten mode, a screen mode, right? Or I like these ones that split the difference that go between, especially things like overlay, soft light, hard light, etc. So let me try overlay here, or let's try soft light. And this gives you just that little bit of finish. It's not going to affect the solid black just because black still come through on a soft light filter. But this is kind of the, the cheap, easy way to do it, just using the filter. What does it look like without it? It looks like this. right? So it just gives it a little bit extra finish. And I especially like it when things look overly digital, like the drop shadows or where I erased out. That halftone really helps helps it not look so fake looking. And of course, I can thin it with opacity. That's at 100%. I can make it even more subtle if I want to. And because it's grayscale, what if I wanted this to give a tone? Like, I like this post, but I wish it was more orange, right? I could do it on the half tone. I can say image, adjustments, uh, hue saturation. Because it's grayscale, I have to click colorize. And then I can force the saturation up and I can give it an overall kind of blending color. So this is a pretty clever way to play with this without having to threaten your, your imagery. And you can apply this just to your type, just to the background, just to your spot illustration. So now we'll see those dots and those dots are all giving that warmth. I think it's a little too much, but let me do it a little bit. So again, I go to hue saturation on a half tone filter and I have to click colorize. Otherwise we'll just stay gray. I'm going to shift it to, do I want greenish? No, I probably want, you can actually see the colors you're shifting it to. little bit more red, maybe a little bit darker. And then I can always adjust it again with hue saturation and just take that saturation down. So it's just a hint of that. Yeah, so <clears throat> it takes my kind of lime green and turns it more to a yellow and tones everything just a little bit in a, in a way I like. Okay, so that's one way of doing the finishing technique. Next, I'm gonna show you the professional way. So you can play with half-tone finishing. You might wanna use it for your final project as a filter, but the real way is to actually separate it from RGB mode into CMYK mode. So I'm gonna save this because I've only added options to my poster. I haven't hurt anything. Another thing I like to play with is I can take this layer and move it down so it's only on top of, say, the background or only on top of the background and the text, but not on top of the, the illustration, right? Or put it on top of everything. All right, so that is saved. In order to do this next thing, which is complicated, I need to have just a flat image of it. So I'm gonna make a copy of it. And honestly, I think the safest way to do that is to close your Photoshop file and open up your finished JPEG file, the one that you posted to Canvas for assignment six. So I'm gonna open that in Photoshop because that's already flattened. You could also just flatten your Photoshop file and save it with a different name. Okay, so here it is, one flattened image. Now I'm gonna change it in mode 
Right now it's in RGB mode. And the way you can see that is if you click on channels, which is next to layers, this is how the computer is seeing the image. Your computer is made up of red, green, and blue lights, right? But if you start turning those lights off, that's what the green and blue lights are doing for this image. That is what just the green lights are doing. And where it's black in the language of the computer, that's where the green light is turned on at 100%. And where it's white, that's where the green light, actually, no, it's the opposite. Where it's white, that's where the green light is turned on at 100%. Where it's black, the green light isn't turned on at all. If I combine it with blue, and that will give us a mixture, where it's white or where it's yellow is where you see the blue and the green both overlapping each other at about 50%. And that gives you yellow light. So here we have greens, we have blues, and we have yellows. In order to get the full range of color, we have to add red, and that gives us the full spectrum. What if I just do green and red? Right. What if I just do blue and red? That will give me all the purples. Now, that's RGB. To change it into printing, we have to change the mode of the image. We do that up by image, and we change the mode. And we go from RGB color to CMYK color. When we do this, it's going to limit. It gives us a little warning. Actually, I'll leave that warning on because it's good to re be reminded. Because we can see so many more colors with light, millions of colors, we can only see thousands of colors with CMYK and mixing. So some of the colors are going to shift a little bit. You could just see it a little bit in the greens for sure. Like they get less intense. So I just did Command Z. I'll toggle. Look right here where the greens are. So this is RGB mode. This is CMYK. RGB. CMYK. All right, now if we look at channels next to layers, we see cyan, magenta, yellow, and black as options. And now this is not based on light, this is based on printing ink. So the only black inks in my image are right here. If I add yellow to it, this is what the yellows and blacks would look like. These would be the different uh, layers of a, a four color lithography press. If I add magenta to that, I get all the oranges with the black, but no blues, no greens. And if I add cyan, I get the full spectrum. What if I just do cyan and black? Now, some of my earliest jobs were t-shirt designs, but they didn't want to spend for four color inks. And for a full color t-shirt that's silkscreened professionally, you need not if it's not a white t-shirt, you need five inks. You need white as like a base primer and then you need cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink layered up. So most t-shirt companies that I worked with wanted to spend money for three colors, for three inks. So I had to pick a base t-shirt color. I would usually use like a tan. And then I would custom, custom uh, mix those inks, right? So I wouldn't use cyan. I'd use like a navy blue. And I wouldn't use magenta. I'd use like a a brighter kind of scarlet red. And I wouldn't use a, a yellow. I would use something that was more golden, like kind of a light orange, an ochre color. And those on the tan shirt, the navy blue was enough of a contrast to also be my black, but I could thin it with half tones to mix some of the other colors. So color separation helps you be more versatile as a commercial artist as well. Because you can customize your channels in different ways. Okay, so this is how the computer is seeing it. I always think of it like 3D glasses. You know how it switches between the magenta lens and the cyan lens. You can play with each channel individually. So let's say I like the cyan channel. And I like the black channel together. I want this to be a two-color poster. Right now, it's showing like computers do.